Bonjour mes amis, hi guys. After seeing reviews of the Interstellar watch, the Hamilton Pilot Daydate, I considered buying it for weeks, if not months. Watching the videos over and over again, watching the movie, trying one on at the 80s a couple of times, comparing prices and different versions of it, etc. But in the end, I felt that it wasn't really for me. But while browsing eBay, another watch caught my attention and I immediately felt it would be a much more original addition to my collection. So here it is, the Kaki Navy UTC, a lesser known and I believe now discontinued model with a GMT complication and really original looks with those three sign crowns, two of which operate the inner bezels around the dial. I love the big numerals, which are loomed with a soft green hue compared to the much brighter green loom used on the hands. Notice how the hands loom was given that vintage-like beige patina, which is a discreet welcome color element, along with the darker inner GMT timescale. Some versions of this watch have what I think is called a sidereal timescale in the center instead which makes the reading quite a bit complicated. This watch is a throwback to timepieces that use the rotation of the Earth versus the stars rather than the Sun to read time. There are two inner bezels around the dial. One has a minute or seconds track that mirrors the main one on the dial itself. The other, seen through a window within that first bezel, shows airport codes. Both can be turned in both directions, and God knows what the point of it is. I suppose that air travelers can use it to calculate time differences between their location and other parts of the world. Whatever the use is, they just look cool and add some excitement along with the extra crowns. The watch runs the same automatic ETA 2893-2 with 42 hours of power reserve as my Hamilton Jazzmaster GMT, but thankfully is much better regulated and only gains 4 seconds a day, which is perfectly fine. The top right crown is used to set the main time, the GMT hours and the date. You can also manually wind this automatic watch and you have hacking of the seconds, of course. The date is nicely sized at the 3 o'clock position. The dial bears minimum writing in its center and despite all the tracks running around it, the ensemble works. Notice how the main and GMT hour hands share the same bronze colored double track in the center, while the well proportioned lovely minute and seconds hand reach their respective chapter ring. The hands are painted in a light beige color and the triangle shaped GMT hand pointer seems to float as the arm is painted in the same darker color uh, as the inner chapter ring. Somehow this plethora of information remains very legible and shows much care about design. The watch case is all polished on the top beveled edge and sides, so it will be a big scratch magnet. The well-paired oyster-style bracelet has polished outer links and finely satin-like brushed inner links. 22mm lug width, tapering down to 20mm. Solid end links and solid feel overall. You have that sturdy, thick Hamilton folding clasp with double button release. It's also nicely polished on its beveled edges. Yes, it shows quite a gaping space, but it reduces the risk of damaging a link as a result. Notice the long curved lugs, which look a little weird at first, but actually add to the watch's presence on the wrist. The watch itself is only 42 mm wide, but the lug to lug length is a long 52 mm. It does fit well on the wrist though, given the lug's curved profile. All this chunk of metal does weigh quite a bit, 
and this is one of my heaviest watches. The height is about 12 mm. A lot of it coming from the bezel that angles at the middle and almost seamlessly profiles into the slightly domed sapphire crystal. You might have noticed the application of anti-reflective coating on the underside of the sapphire crystal, which doesn't really help with legibility, but will hopefully safeguard your position from the enemy when you are in a sniper hideout under the sun. So you have here a watch with a lot of presence, nicely balanced and somewhat intriguing looks, and some cool tech as it has a whopping 1000 feet or 300 meters of water resistance thanks to the screwed down crowns and solid case back held by screws. It bears a nice Hamilton crest and hides the utilitarian movement which I think is just as good, especially since I can always see the movement in my Jazzmaster. A specific anti-magnetic mention also appears but without further detail. This watch means business and could be a daily wearer for all occasions. So there you go. You can still find this discontinued model on eBay and some websites in slightly different color variations and on straps. I got mine from the watch outlet, which seems to be what the name implies as although sold as new with tags, the watch came with a bracelet mounted the wrong way and had clear damages around some of the sizing pins of the bracelet. I liked the watch, so I politely complained to the seller and got a tiny financial compensation. So I wouldn't really recommend buying from them, as I've never had this sort of issue from other sellers. Also, they use eBay's global shipping program, so your watch will travel a lot to get to you. My favorite online seller remains Creation Watches in Singapore. To conclude, I think Hamilton makes tons of original designs and this one doesn't fail to make an impression on the wrist. If you've never visited their website or a Hamilton store, I encourage you to do so. They finish the watches really well, everything seems rock solid they keep the watches slim enough so that even wider cases wear well on the wrist and costs are kept down since they use the swatches group movement. I hope this review was useful. Speak to you in the next one. Take care guys.